This is Seasons of Discontent with your hosts, Rick Snyder and Matt Combs. Welcome to Seasons of Discontent. Season 11, episode 20, brought to you by Rick Snyder's Washington. And I'm Rick Snyder. And I'm Matt. Almost forgot my name there for a second. And we're talking about all things Washington sports and uh, politics and whatever else is going on. <laughs> no politics. Oh, okay, so hit the hit the subscribe button, share, comment, screw the thanks button. No way hits it anyway. All right, so we always pick the game first off because all of you will be off after. You're going to quit watching after this. I'm going Pittsburgh plus two and a half, 27. Washington 24, which has them also over the uh, totals of 44 and a half. Mm. I'm going Steelers. People get mad at me. I'm like, you cannot pick them 17 times or that's called skins tangibles. <laughs> Whatever. You got to pick. I mean, the Steelers are a first place team. It's not like I'm picking them to lose to Cleveland. I'm going to go against you on this one. My right. gut is telling me. I'll say Washington 24, Pittsburgh 21. Ooh, all right. Next week, uh, well, it's coming week. To me, they play Pittsburgh and then the Thursday game uh, at Philly. To me, there you go. The first place team in the AFC North, and the other game is for the NFC East lead, probably. So, woo, that's a heck of a four day stretch that they're going to be looking at. Yeah, I think they're going to be come, they're going to come in. They'll be prepared against Pittsburgh. I, I I don't know. I think it might be too short of a turnaround. It'll be the first time Jaden has to go to Philadelphia. I can see that being a loss. So I, I'll give them the win against Pittsburgh. I think they'll take the loss against Philly. That's just my gut. Yeah, you really don't want to lose two games in four days. Holy, you know, the bandwagon will break two wheels off and go over the edge of the cage. I was going to say, Tony Kornheiser is not going to pay the gas money for the bandwagon anymore. It's going to shut down real fast. Oh, man, it'll be chaos in Washington. <clears throat> I can't imagine chaos in Washington, but, uh, you know, now that we have a, a new president coming. But at least that's all over with. I can now go back to big pharma commercials about whatever disease I might be having after listening to it. Are you? Do you have this? Oh, well, yeah, I have that. You're going to die unless you buy this drug. So I guess that's our – we're going back to Burger King commercials and – and pills of exemptic or something. Thank God I don't have to talk about Larry Hogan for Senate anymore. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> and Angela also brooks his tax evasion and the four homes that she owns. I swear to God, I know everything about the woman. I mean, yeah. I mean, somebody, I mean, you know, Grant Paulson was writing about, I, I, he lives in Virginia. I can't take any more of this Maryland Senate commercial. It's like, yeah, I'll remind you next year when Virginia picks a governor. Hey, guess uh, what? Tim Kaine's running for Senate in Virginia. <laughs> I, I I know that. Well, did you see Saturday Night Live last week? I did. They had that game show, and they had, Tim Kaine comes in front. They thought, the guy's going, this is the most important election. It's Tim ever. Scott. <laughs> yeah. who, am I, who am I? He goes, you voted for me for the most important election ever. Now you don't even know my name. Mm -hmm. Then he comes back like a minute later, and they play again. Who am I? I don't know. Tim Kaine's like that. It makes me, I was really, that was funny when he did that. So, all right, anyway, back to the sports. Um, yeah, we're at mid-season, sort of. I hate the 17-game season. That we're sorry, we we're at halftime last game. They were at mid-season. But, well, and it's so weird with them having a late bye again this year. Yeah, once again, third straight year that it's been the second December, Sunday. I mean, where'd that come from? Three. I mean, I like it because I get to do Christmas stuff. But still, it's like, who does this? And, and it's so odd with it being so late because just a couple of weeks ago, there was a Sunday in the middle of the season where every team was playing. Yeah. Like generally that's only like the first two weeks and then buys start kicking in. But there was a, I think it was week six, maybe week five, week six. There were no buys. It was so weird. They had the two. I think that ESPN is really pushing this two Monday night game. Um, Cause as we saw when, you know, with what's going on behind me, the the Bills Jaguars game was a snoozer. That game was over at halftime, and then you of course you had Commanders Bengals, which was a shootout. Um, you know, I I think that ESPN liked having an alternate as to where they were. You know, there's usually only one game, and if it's a blowout, everybody's gone by halftime. 
I don't always get to watch much Monday night because I do all my live chats. But what do they get to say? This game sucks. Let's go to the other one. And then, do they cut away or something? No, it's on two separate channels. Oh, well then you can go over to the Manning cast and watch that. You know. Yeah, there's uh the the first game starts on ESPN. The second game is on ABC. I thought I did a New York Giants podcast recently with an old friend of mine. And he said, you know, there was talk that the Giants are going to wait two years and get the young Manning uh, for quarterback. And I thought, can you imagine the Manning cast if the Giants get the the next Manning? Oh, my God, they're going to go crazy. Well, they were they, they were saying that about Daniel Jones, too, because he went to the Manning passing camp and. He's got the Manning face just like Eli does. I mean, Eli was like his mentor. I mean, they were supposed to have the second or the third coming of Manning, and Daniel Jones sucks. <laughs> I don't know. He ran around the edge of this team. A oh, he does that all the time against us. I mean, but against every other team, he sucks. Yeah, he's Danny Dimes here. He's Danny Pennies everywhere else. I mean, <laughs> it was really weird on that. But if midseason, if I had to grade this team, and I'm just doing this off the cuff, I haven't even thought about it yet. I probably, I think you have to give them an A minus. I mean, definitely because we didn't think they were going to be that good. Well, I probably should give them an A plus because we thought they'd be seven and ten. Maybe they still will be, but they're going to have to lose the rest of them. Um, they did that last year. They lost the last eight. <laughs> I guess it still could happen. Uh, but they've so exceeded expectations. The offense is, you know, dynamite on everything. You kind of, it's a sum of the parts to me are better on offense than they would be individually. Because you don't have all these all pros. You know, Jaden is certainly, Jaden might be MVP. I mean, he's rookie of the year. The question oh. now is, can he be MVP? The only way he gets to be MVP is if this team gets in the playoffs, which are not supposed to count for voting, but they do. Yeah. On there. Uh, so- MVP will be tough. I mean, Lamar is playing like Lamar. Uh, yeah. Josh Allen is playing really well for Buffalo. There's going to be a lot of stiff competition for MVP. He's definitely rookie of the year. He's definitely making the Bears look stupid by taking Caleb Williams. I mean, you just, you just, I mean, this year has really been the Jaden Daniels revenge tour, realistically, Rick, if you think about it. You know, the Bears chose Caleb over him. Um, you know, we, we, we've all seen the clip of him meeting with Dayball and all them guys and, and drawing on the board and all that stuff. And then you've seen the clip of, <clears throat> the GM of the Giants kids saying, go all in, trade up for Jaden Daniels. This is a once in a lifetime, you know, guy. They don't do it. They get uh, Malik neighbors. So it, it is really kind of like this is a, a year for Jaden Daniels to prove that he is not just a running back, to prove that he's a quarterback and to prove that, you know, everybody that doubted him is wrong. Um, does that carry over to next year? I mean, we've all talked about it. This team has what a hundred million dollars in cap space next year. Now you got some guys that you need to resign. There are some guys that came in here on one year prove it deals that you have to pay them now because they have definitely proved it. Um, you know, I, I was on, I was among those that said Eckler, um, Bobby Wagner and, um, the tight end who's slipping my mind right now, Ertz. Ertz, Zach Ertz. I was among the group that thought those three guys were just here to get a paycheck and kind of burn out their last couple of years. Um, all three of those guys have made plays for this team. Eckler still has legs underneath of him coming back from a pretty bad uh, leg injury last year. Uh, Ertz is definitely the leader in the tight end room. And I'll be honest with you, Rick, he is, he is a hell of a motivation on the field for these guys. You can see they feed off his energy. Um, you know, there, there's there's a lot of room for improvement on this team and i think that you know if they do happen to sneak into the playoffs and and you know even if they go out in the first round you know year one under quinn peters is is definitely a win um and and all they're going to do is is you know get better hopefully with all that cap space and and making the right moves and plugging the right holes with people that matter um, you know, I think one of the things we talked about with the last show was, was interjecting people into, um, into, a, into the room who, who might disrupt what they have going on. Um, you know, next year, you're going to have to put people in that room that you may not want to, but they're going to fit. And, and, and I'm hoping that things work out, but uh, you know, I, this is probably the most positive I've ever felt about a commanders, Redskins, Washington football team in the last 20 years. I mean, aside from maybe 2012 
watching Robert Griffin do what he did was amazing, but we all kind of knew it was going to come to an end when they figured him out. You know, we were in that, we were in that, that time period of, you know, the wildcat took the league by storm with the dolphins and Ronnie Brown. And then by next year, everybody had figured it out. You know, Robert Griffin, they figured RG three out. You take his legs away. Not, not in the holy, not a sense where he did take his legs away, but you know, you, you, you take away his ability to run and you make him beat you with his arm and he can't do it. Jane Daniels is not that guy. Jane Daniels can beat you with his arm. He's proven it time and time again this season, and he can beat you with his legs. So, you know, for, for the mid season grade, I'm going to, I'm going to go with you. It's an a, it, they are way above expectations for me. Um, and, and, and on, you know, they're going to lose a couple games. We know this. They're not going to go 16 and two or 15 and two or whatever the, the combo is now. I still, I, I still want to say 14 and two. Um, but yeah, I mean, they're, they're way ahead of where they are. They're way ahead of schedule. Yeah. So defensively, I, I mean, I'd probably give them a C and that's probably going to be kind been a lot of rough games. It's been a couple good. This team was ranked 32nd in defense last year. And uh, how many new starters are there? I think of nine or something crazy. Yeah. It's <laughs> not the same defense at all. They just wear those jerseys. <clears throat> There's so few guys left. You know, the same- only guys that I can think off the top of my head that were here last year were Juiced, Quan Martin, what, Forbes, and, and well, still playing, Deron Payne. Yeah. Yeah, it's like three guys. Mathis didn't play last year. Mathis was on IR all year. Yeah. On Allen's on IR this year. Who's left? None of our linebacking core is the same. Right. Yeah. So it's totally different. So I, I hate to judge them against last year at all. But, I mean, I give them a C. They've had some good games. They've had some bad games. Uh, if you look over the course of nine games, they've been okay, but not great by any chance. But they're getting better. That's the nice part is they're trending upward as coach likes to say. So I'd like to think that they're getting better with experience and time and plugging it in. And um, yeah, I, I agree with you on the C. I think we need to, this, this defense needs to be more opportunistic. They need to develop a better pass rush. They need to make a, they need to make a quarterback back there unsettled. You know what I mean? And they need to be more opportunistic when it comes to creating turnovers. This team doesn't really create a lot of turnovers. They're, there needs to be they need to really focus on that. They need to bring somebody in that's going to create some turnovers. Question against the Steelers is can the defensive line, you know, beat Pittsburgh's offensive line? And probably not. Pittsburgh got a really good offensive line. Um, and that's really a key. I mean, their quarterbacks, I mean, Russell Wilson, I don't know what to quite make of him yet. Um, is he good? Is is he back to where he was? I don't think so, but he's not terrible. No. I mean, it was uh the other quarterback. So, I mean, I, I think the Steelers have over, you know, over expectations too. Oh yeah. The Steelers have way overachieved. I think with Russell Wilson, his, his ability to beat you with his legs is not there anymore. It's not the Russell from Seattle that burnt this team over and over and over again. Um, he still can throw. I mean, and he's got some pretty good wide receivers. Pickens is pretty good. He's got a hell of a tight end in Fairmouth. Um, I, I, he's not the Russell Wilson from Seattle but he's not the Russell Wilson that we saw in Denver either. You know, it, it's kind of somewhere in the middle. Um, but I think if you, if you make him uncomfortable, which like you said, I don't know if they can, I mean, Pittsburgh's always had a very good offensive line. Um, if, if you can make him uncomfortable back there, you can make him make mistakes. Oh. All right. So we get done early for once. I don't know what time it is anyway, but, um, next week. Yeah. We'll have to do a Monday show again next week because, uh, Game, we're coming up on the games so much. I don't know. We'll be back. Don't forget Monday night, 8 to 9 Eastern. I'm also uh, up every week. We talk all about whatever. It's actually, I would say a lot, a lot more people on the bandwagon watching the show is including this one. Uh, so thanks all for coming. Nice little section of, uh, we forgot to mention this last show, nice little section of Commanders fans up there in the Meadowlands. Yeah, so I just see the one guy drunk who kept falling down the stand. The guy in the Art Monk jersey. <laughs> Yeah, I mean that dude was like three hundred pounds rolling. Oh my god, rolling down empty seats and coming very close to the upper deck rail. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you're like, oh my god, is he going to go over the rail? <laughs> yeah. That was, well, when you win, everybody goes along. Now, 
show me a big contingent of Reds, uh, Redskins Commanders fans up in Philly. That's when you're going to be fighting. Yeah. You know, Giants fans won't necessarily fight you right away. You got to provoke it a little. Yeah. Not going to do that in Philly. <laughs> They're ready for you. Yeah, and I think that'll be another thing that we look to is is this will be one of the first tests of the road team's fans. You know what I mean? Like Pittsburgh's only what five hours away from the stadium, if that. There's a huge Steelers conglomeration in the DC area. This will be the first real test, I think, of um of seeing what what the stadium will look like with other if if the other team's fans can somehow overwhelm the commander fans. But that was, uh, man, like you said, that bandwagon's gassed up and fired up and ready to roll. Yeah, that was a, a few years ago. They were playing that Monday night game, and Pittsburgh must have been ninety percent of the crowd. Well, they were eleven and zero. Yeah, but I mean, still, they were like ninety percent of Washington's crowd. Mm. And um, they left, and they left eleven and one. Let's not forget that. So it's, I don't know what to expect on Pittsburgh's crowd. Did they buy tickets before, you know, the season started, and so there were a lot of tickets left to sell. That kind of thing. I mean, they're they're doing well. I mean, they've they've had the home edge on all four home games uh, so far. Although the Giants one was like a 60-40 Commanders, but still, if this was last year. Pittsburgh would again have eighty plus percent of the crowd. I don't know this time. Maybe it's a fifty fifty kind of thing. But it will be interesting this one, and then you know later on, Dallas and Philly will have their fans here. Tennessee is playing here, I believe. Um, Safe. Yeah, because I think we're in Atlanta. Yeah, yeah. That's Tennessee step. here that that'll be a small contingent. Well, the uh, Atlanta's a home game here, which we oh Atlanta's know. here. Yeah, and that's twenty that eighth or 29th. We don't know yet. Right. This time, well, it depends on how the Falcons are. If the Falcons are in playoff contention, I could see them doing it. Um, Tennessee's a game here, December first. I don't see that being any. Any road fans there? So this team is at New Orleans, uh, December fifteenth. So you want to get drunk for Christmas <laughs> and go to that game? There won't be any Saints fans there. No, they're they're already breaking out the bags. Oh, they've already. Yeah, I read the I read the release from the uh, New Orleans owners and all. It said we fired coach today. We think he's an excellent coach. He got some bad breaks. He hung. He never hung his head. He did the right thing, but we're firing him. <laughs> Wait a minute! You just say he was an excellent coach. He got screwed on breaks. He ain't caused any trouble, but yeah, you got to go. Yep. Middle of the season, which oh sure that'll help you win more games. Yeah. Uh, I, that was I, I was one of the great ones. I, I tell you, that was a game I was worried about too, especially after <clears throat> the first couple times we saw this defense on the field. I figured. You know, and and let's not forget, New Orleans scored over forty points the first two games of the season. They annihilated the Dallas Cowboys in Week Two. It was one of the greatest butt kickings I've seen in a long time. I was very worried about that game. I'm not so worried about that game that much anymore. <laughs> no, not unless Dan Quinn goes down to uh, Bourbon Street and has a few hand grenades before the game. Yeah, no, I I feel like New Orleans is completely given up. Yeah, so they, you know, like I said, they've got winnable games. We talk about the big ones, but they've got a lot of small ones. So they should win. So this team should win eleven games for the first time since the Super Bowl year. Which, yeah, is I like, mean, realistically, I mean, 10, 11 wins is not out of the question. No, not at all. Now, I mean, you Dallas know. is given up. Let's be honest. Dallas is pretty much given up. Um, you know, I, I think. I don't know. They they might be able to catch Dallas. One of the Dallas games where Dak is still not 100 percent with the hamstring. Um, he you know, didn't play last time this past week because yeah, he left early, late to me. No, he, well, that's right. Dak left early. It was uh, the running back who didn't Zeke. Get to play. Yeah, Zeke got benched. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, Zeke hadn't done anything anyway. Zeke, that's <laughs> that was a that was a dumb signing. Well, Jerry gets to do what Jerry, Jerry wants. could have had. Jerry could have had Derrick Henry. He went with Ezekiel Elliott. Thank you, Jerry. Yeah, that's true. All right. We're out of here. I'm Rick Snyder. And I'm Matt. See you next week. Bye. Thanks for listening to Seasons of Discontent with your hosts, Rick Snyder and Matt Combs. <laughs>